In this video, we're going to look at the properties of continuity. Before we talk about the properties that your textbook goes through with you for properties of continuity, I did want to just recap some of the most common functions that we deal with. Um, your textbook doesn't do a great job of reviewing them except by giving you questions to practice, but let's just make them very explicit. How do we know when different functions are continuous? Well, a polynomial function, what you're most familiar with, of course, is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, which is, of course, a quadratic. But really, we're talking about any function where it's x to the n and bx to the n minus 1 and so on. Polynomial functions, and that would actually include a linear function. Um, if it's just you say 2x plus 3. These are all continuous everywhere. The domain is negative infinity to infinity. You don't have to do any proof on those types of questions. You can say this is polynomial and continuous everywhere. For a rational function, a rational function is something that's going to look like p of x over q of x. So it's going to have essentially two different functions. And when you have something like this, the domain is typically um, where q of x does not equal zero. So again, we can't divide by zero. Now we did talk about removability and non-removability with rational functions. So if the factor cancels, so if the factor of q of x cancels, it's removable. And if not, it's an asymptote. Okay, let's talk about rational functions. Rational functions are going to look like f of x is equal to some nth root of, we'll say, g of x. So how do I know what the domain is here? Well, if n is even, I can't take the square root or the fourth root of a negative value. So if n is even, then g of x, the radicand, has to be greater than or equal to 0. But if n is odd, then it's just everywhere, negative infinity to infinity. Lastly, let's talk about the trig functions. Again, sine and cosine are continuous everywhere, negative infinity to positive infinity. Secant and tangent have all sorts of asymptotes. They have an asymptote, which means it's not in the domain, at x equals, please make sure you include the x equals because this is a function, x equals pi n plus pi over 2. So essentially, oh, sorry when n is an integer. All sorts of students miss that n is an integer. You have to say that n is an integer because then we're saying pi over 2 plus some value of n. So it's pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, so on and so forth. Whereas cosecant and cotangent also have asymptotes, and asymptotes are considered not part of the domain, at x equals pi, of n, pi times n again, where n is an element of the integers. So basically multiples of pi, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, and so on. Let's look now at some of the properties of continuity. We'll start with scalar multiple. And that essentially says if you have a function that is being multiplied by a scalar, being some value that doesn't include a variable, that you can just say the continuity is the same whether or not it is being multiplied by that scalar multiple. So 5 times cosine of x has the same continuity as cosine of x, which is that it's continuous everywhere. Sum or difference says if you're finding the sum or difference of different functions, look at the continuity of each of those functions by themselves. x plus 7, that's linear. So I'm looking at that whole thing. x is linear. 7 I'm sorry, x is continuous, 7 is continuous, sine of x is continuous, this entire function is continuous everywhere. Product. Again, if I'm looking at the product of two functions, 4x is continuous everywhere, tangent of x is discontinuous at x equal 
pi n plus pi over 2, where n is some integer. So that whole function is also discontinuous there. We would also take into account if 4x were discontinuous anywhere, but of course, in this case, it is not. For quotient, same thing. Think about the continuity of x that's continuous everywhere. Sine of x, continuous everywhere. But this also is a quotient, so now I have to be concerned about where is sine of x equals 0. That's where it's going to be discontinuous because we can't divide by 0. So this is going to be discontinuous everywhere that sine of x is equal to 0, and that's at 0, and at pi, and at 2 pi, and 3 pi, and so forth. So this is actually pi n, where n is some integer. Last one, composite function, 2x, that's continuous everywhere, so I don't have to worry too much about that, but if it was discontinuous somewhere, I would have to be concerned about it. And also, now I look at tangent. Well, I know tangent is discontinuous at pi n plus pi over 2, but now we're saying I'm taking whatever that is times 2. So essentially, I'm going to take 2x and set that equal to pi n plus pi over 2 which means I'm going to be discontinuous at, again, dividing everything by 2, pi n divided by 2 plus pi divided by 4, where n is some integer. And of course, I could do some work to clean that up a little bit and make it one fraction. But just be careful when what you're taking the um, sine, cosine, trig function of, when that's being multiplied by something, that is going to change things for you. So let's just do a little bit of continuity practice to make sure we really understand. We'll start with finding any points of discontinuity and telling whether they are removable. Well, this is a cosecant function, and hopefully you know cosecant functions are discontinuous at x equals pi n, where n is some integer. However, just like on our last practice just a moment ago, notice we're taking 2 times x, so we're saying that 2x is pi n. So that means x in this case is pi over 2 n, where n is an uh, element of the integers. So that is where this function is discontinuous at all of those points. Um, so I'm going to say either discontinuous at that or that the domain does not include that. It kind of depends on the question being asked. For the second one, what are the intervals in which the function is continuous? So again, this is a radical function. x is continuous everywhere, so I really only need to be concerned about x plus 3. And x plus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0 because this is the square root function, so it's even. So that means x has to be greater than or equal to negative 3. So the interval on which it's continuous is negative 3 to infinity. So that's a mixed interval um, as long as negative 3 is the least value. Last one, determine the value of a such, the, such that the function is continuous over its entire domain. So we haven't done one like this. These are kind of fun. Um, the, we know this is continuous. We know this is continuous because it's just a linear function. So really, the only part I need to be concerned about is when x is equal to 1. So how do I do that? I know that 3x squared, when x is 1, is equal to 3 times 1, or 3. So essentially, I need this function to also equal 3 when I plug in 1. So a times 1 minus 4 has to equal 3. So again, I determined the value of y when x was 1 and noted that it was 3. And I'm going to set my other part of my function equal to 3. So I'm going to add 4 to each side. So a times 1 is going to be equal to 7. And so therefore, if I divide each side by 1, a must have to be equal to 7. So again, I just need to make sure that at the point x equals 1, these two will match up. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at the Intermediate Value Theorem.